Johnson on XFM 104.9. And with the Javais, with me, Steve Melton. Hello. Well, Phil Kinton. Steve, you got any other toilet related <laughs> anecdotes? Rick, my life is just full of toilet trauma. Yeah. And I, Carl, you may not realise this, but uh, a while back I used to host, this is bizarre, I used to host a radio show on the BBC World Service, right? Now, you, if you want someone who's, got, who's the voice of integrity, the voice of intelligence, the voice of a nation, you're going to come to me. That's yeah. obvious. And I was broadcasting, so now they've got listeners of something like 50, 60 million people around the world. It's mental, the listenership of the World Service. And I used to host this show with someone. It's a big place, Steve. The world? Yeah. You're absolutely right. And uh, anyway, so I had to I had to be into uh, Bush House where they broadcast from, 10 o'clock every Friday morning, to broadcast around the world to 50 million people, right? And one week, uh, I went to the toilet in my house, right? Everyone had left, so I got there a bit late. I got up a bit late. Already against me. The clock was already against me. I had to be there at 10 o'clock to broadcast around the world. And we've got two toilets in our house, downstairs one, right? And the door had already been a bit dodgy. It was one of those doors where you had to give it a bit of a kick as you went in. It was getting a bit, it was getting a bit tight. I don't know what the wood was expanding or something. You know, I'm in there. And same thing again happens, no toilet paper. I think, oh, God, I'm going to have to somehow kind of make it up. Why don't you check first? I normally do, Rick. I normally do. It's just on a certain occasions when I'm bleary-eyed or something, I just, I forget. Or occasionally I forget. Normally I do check. Right. And um, you've got to bear in mind that it's not like this is happening every week. This is over the course of many years that yeah. these incidents have accu- accumulated. So um, You've condensed them. For, for the purposes instance. of this anecdote. Sure. Yeah. 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 And... Sure. Um, Great, you're, you're, you're just brilliant to keep the, keeping the pace up of an anecdote there, Rick. You've just drawn in. I don't know where I am now. Anyway, oh, I know, I know where I'm. I'm trapped in a toilet oh, with no oh, toilet paper. Yeah. That's where I am. And I'm thinking maybe I peel off some of the wallpaper, you know, things like that. But there's nothing I can do. I got to go Use upstairs. Paper. Well, exactly. But I got to go upstairs and find toilet paper. Note. Was there any? <laughs> there wasn't. Sadly. There wasn't. Oh, I got to go upstairs and maybe find a notepad or something like that. <laughs> and uh, so I try the door. Right, the door's wedged. And I'm pulling on the door and I can't get the door open it's just like it won't come open and it's already and I knew it was going to come to this at some point like it's just like the clock's ticking I'm trying to pull the door open trying to run my ankles again and I'm thinking well what I could do is I could open the window I suppose and like try and climb out but not really because I got the trousers on the ankles and that's or if it was problem. raining just stick your ass <laughs> out two birds in one sadly it was a beautiful day Rick. It's, I call it the world B day <laughs> <laughs> and so um so what I'm thinking is, well, wonder. I've got my mobile phone in there, actually, because it's in my pocket. I'm thinking, well, maybe I can phone. I would seriously Kleenex. Think, maybe I'll phone <laughs> the fire brigade. By this point, I mean, just drive. <laughs> <laughs> no, it hadn't. It was. Hold it was on. Was that little puppy not around? Because uh, sometimes you can call that. It's got a little bit wrapped round it. Listen. Uh, or just use the puppy issue. itself. There's 50 million people around the world going to yeah. hear my voice in like. Yeah. 30 minutes. Exactly. And Where's Steve? He's not locked in a toilet again, is he? <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. So, um, so, I, so I'm thinking about phoning the fire brigade, and I'm thinking, sure. like, if I do that, it's gonna, you know it's going to be the first call that goes straight on the speaker for like the entire fire brigade service. Everywhere. With a butch hero carrying you down over his shoulders with your trousers around your ankles. <laughs> exactly. Can I just not pull him up? No. You've got to be learned to talk a lesson. Yeah. But I imagine the idea of phoning up and going, uh, hello there, I'm, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a problem. I'm trapped in a room in my house. Oh, yeah, which one is it? Oh, it's I quite don't need small. to know. It's quite <laughs> small. <laughs> is it? Yeah. yeah. It's not the toilet, is it? Because we don't want to come up and rescue someone who, who's trapped in the toilet. Which no. service do you require? <laughs> Paper. <laughs> so, um, so I, I think I can't find the fire brigade. The clock's ticking. So then I think I think one of my housemates is still in the house, but it's still asleep. So I phone the house number. Right, phone rings and rings and rings for ages, and eventually he answers the phone. <laughs> right, gets out of bed, answers the phone. Yeah, hi, it's Steve. All right, what's wrong? I'm what are you downstairs. doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Just, oh, I didn't wait. I don't know. What are you doing? Ah, oh, just in the toilet. I'm just downstairs in the toilet. Oh, yeah, what are you doing? Oh, I've, well, I've finished what I'm... Have you, have you got any <laughs> toilet paper? Any bog roll? Yeah. So he had to um, kind of scrape together a few bits of paper, you know, and sort of tin foil or whatever he could find yeah. in the house. A right? cactus. Come down oh, no. Pass it th- underneath the door, right? And now I t- then he, I said, can you move away from the door while I... Because I don't want you to hear me as I'm, you know, wiping the... And so you he didn't did say it. that. Yeah, well, I didn't want him to, you know, that's, what, that's what, embarrassing. Sorry, what, what that's you, embarrassing. What were you yeah, wiping yes. it with? But not tumbleweed? What do you mean? What <laughs> no, noise? I know what you mean. Yeah, no, exactly. Right. So, um, so then I say, right, can you smash Why was he hovering? <laughs> Why didn't he want to walk away? <laughs> Will you keep your head, what was it, <laughs> outside with a glass to his ear? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thankfully, there was, there, was, there was a window in the door, but it was frosted glass. Mm. You could just see my, my semi-naked body moving around. And, um... So eventually I said to him, look, listen, I'm going to need you to sort of kick the door in. He said, well, I don't want to kick the door in because you're going to have to pay for it, aren't you? I said, yeah, but I've got to go to the World Service. I've got to, uh, yeah. And he was a lovely man. He's the weakest man you've ever, you've ever come across. It's like you, if there's one person you don't want to have to throw their body weight against the door, it was him. It's like he'll snap before the door will. 
So he's smashing against this the door. This sounds like a fetish to me, though. He went in there, and there you were naked with lots of toilet paper. And you go, oh, you've broken the door down, and there I am naked. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Oh, you've rumbled me, Rick. <laughs> I wish I'd not told that embarrassing story on the radio. <laughs> like it wasn't embarrassing enough, you've just got to make it slightly more seedy. Uh, so, did he, did, did he get it down? He did it, yeah, and I got to World Service with, like, minutes to spare. Oh. And uh, interestingly, I told that story to 50 million people around the world. Did you really? Yeah. Did they understand? I think what, what, so. What, I mean, is that a bit of a problem when you're on the World Service? Like, thinking of things that everyone can understand? Yeah. Mm. You can't it's a bit like when talking yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Carl. I think you're on thin ice there, <laughs> worrying about people understanding what you're saying. No, but you can't talk about stuff that's on the telly and that, because some people will say, well, we haven't even got a telly here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're listening to XFM 104.9. Play a record. Nirvana, all apologies on XFM 104.9 on the Digital Days, obviously, with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pitch as well. Steve, I met up with, I know it's forbidden, usually. Mm, I don't know why uh, you Let me just expla- explain to the uh, listener. Um, me and Steve have got a little bit of a pact. We're not allowed to talk to Carl during the week because he comes out with too much dynamite and we want it to be fresh and it's it's just unfair and if he sees us laughing he, he clams up a little bit because he he knows something's wrong with his head so um i was in the pub and uh carl called he returned a call i was called you earlier and i said oh, i'm just across the road so i come over and uh he came over and we had a conversation and uh, I kept saying, no, save it. And I can't remember half the things he was saying. But I do remember one thing he said. He said that the human eye never grows. It's the, he, said, he said, unlike your ears and nose that keeps growing all your life, he says the human eye never grows. Now, there's a little bit of, he says, now you look at a baby, it's got big eyes. It's got the same size eyes as it will have. When, when, when a baby's never. born, everyone always says, oh, look at its eyes, don't they? Because that's like the main feature. Yeah. They're quite big. They what? don't grow, they don't get any smaller, they stay the same size. What, you mean once you become an adult, you've the same size no. eyes? as soon as you come out of the womb, <laughs> your eyes, the size they are, as a little baby, they stay the same size. Until it's you like die. sockets. And I said, I pointed out to him, right, you know, I said, if that was true, Steve Merchant, when he was a baby, with these eyes he's got now, would look like a hammerhead shark. All right, calm down. <laughs> you don't want to go <laughs> lay into the eyes. Do you know what I mean? Just to prove my point. I didn't That's laugh. Good. When he said that. Respect. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Well, I've, I've got the eyes of the windows of the soul. <laughs> and mine are that happen to be enormous plate glass windows. Glass windows. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but no, nevertheless, they're beautiful. But many people find them beautiful. Yeah, they're, they're great. Yeah, many people find them beautiful. Um, yeah. but, uh, Do you know they don't have kneecaps either? My eyes or? What? Ba- babies. <laughs> when they're born, they, d- they don't get kneecaps until they're about two. <laughs> they don't get kneecaps? Isn't that true? Yeah. I know uh, what you're talking true, about, Carl. That's but it's isn't it like a isn't it a little bone? It's part of the well, no, but all the leg bones. you've got lots more lot more bones when you're born. Than yeah, you've got three hundred three hundred when you're born, then two hundred and five when you're an adult. Yeah, they all fuse, don't they? Do they? The head's got to be all soft to come out. Right. Um, as we said earlier, you know. I would know. I'm a shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh so God! So what did you say when he said about my eyes being huge? Okay, big? get off it. That, so that isn't nice, considering yeah. he's not here. Yeah, Should I wait like until he's there when I slug him off? Yeah, very well. No, nice one, Carl. You're an honourable man. <laughs> oh, well, there's, I know, you see, the thing is, right, that made me think that it might be a little bit of truth in this. There is as well, is the, the ear thing. <laughs> have you seen that with old That's men true, who yeah. have really long ears? Yeah. And big noses? Yeah. yeah. Do, they, do they eat buns and uh, walk around in the jungle, these, these old men? You mean that the ears and the nose carry on growing? Yeah, yeah they do, that's true. That's true, it's cartilage. Yeah, but not like, not like sort of Pinocchio. No, no, after you're dead. You leave a body lying around, he's got a huge elephant really? type ears. Really? You left him long enough? Four foot nose, that's oh. what, yeah. Um, that's no, remarkable. But, but you see, the, it's about the focal um, uh, length in, in your eye, you see, because it's, it's like a big lens. So it would make sense that, that they couldn't change that much. Because mm. um, an owl, do you know why an owl turns its head round? Sort of like 180 degrees? No. Because it, it can't move its eyes. Because the eyes take up the whole... It's the biggest eye in the animal kingdom. The eyes take up the whole of its skull. Cause really? Yeah. Yeah, and it has to move its... Yeah. Has it got a brain in there as well? It's got a brain in there, yeah, above the eye. Yeah. When I say the whole of the skull... Quite, yeah. There's yeah. also some space for the brain. What I meant is the, 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 the two diameters of the eye is the, is the diameter of the You've lost the me skull. there on, with diameters and 
You didn't like maths, did you? Never, don't like maths. Never understood it. Couldn't yeah. get to grips with maths. I don't know about you, Carl. Did you do maths, maths, Carl? <laughs> now, how did you do in your exams on the maths? <laughs> did you do enough? Which yeah. I bet yours was rather like my theory, which is why do you need to figure it all out when you've got a calculator? Exactly. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. You're and right. I agree. Well, let's play a record, and afterwards, I'm going to be testing you on your homework this week, Carl. Um, could we do uh, White Van Man first? We could do, oh, just to, you no, know, they've got no, to know what, to what they're dealing with, yeah. Um, Carl's homework was to read all about, um, as you know, Shay Guevara. Absolutely. Uh, uh, last week, he did well on Rasputin, didn't he? Did very well on Rasputin. Yeah, uh, passed uh, with flying marks there. Uh, so, uh, um, let's let's have a bit of Wu-Tang, shall we? Then let's have White yeah. Van Carl. Yeah. White Van Carl. No. Yeah. XFM 104.9, this is Advantage, it's me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Now, I just uh, remember someone else, um, Carl, in the week. I know it's forbidden to talk to him, but we're, we're, I'll tell you this. He was talking, he was very excited about the Friends Reunited. He was a bit nervous at first, wasn't he, last week? But then he was really getting into it. Um, and uh, in the pub, he was talking to about the people, and he said, uh, I'd, n- I'd, I'd never go on a reunion, though. He said, I'd never, never do that. What, a school reunion? Yeah, and he, said, he wouldn't want to see anyone. And I went, well, I, I said, I said, wouldn't you want to see those... Two lads with the big heads and the webbed hands. Oh, yeah, these were people you went to school with, weren't they? Yeah. Well, I didn't knock about with them. They were in the class. What were they called? Ah, freaks. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. And uh, he said, no, I wouldn't want to see them. He said, because what could you say? Oh, you haven't changed much. Right. Mm. And he went, he said, and they wouldn't go anyway, would they? I said, why? He went, well, they didn't have any friends. Right. And I said, well, weren't they friends with each other? And he went, no. That would have been too obvious. <laughs> like they passed it and went, no, I know it's tempting, but let's not. Everyone would think that's just what we were going to do. <laughs> yeah. <not> do <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they didn't even hang around with each other. No. See, I must say, in my in my head, I've got something like it's like a some sort of extra thing from Blake Seven that they're like some sort of you know lagoon monster, but they just had slightly oversized heads, did they? See, does your head grow? Your hmm. eyes don't, does your head? Because maybe they've got to a point now that it's all sort of caught up with each other. <laughs> Go on. Well, at the time, the, the eyes were very small and the head was huge. Uh, just a very big head. And yeah. the, I mean, the fingers aren't going to change, you know, that's not... They had not webbed funny. fingers? It was like the penguin in Batman. <laughs> really? Are you sure? No, honestly. Are you sure they weren't wearing mittens? No, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, they were, it wasn't home economics. They weren't getting some out of the oven, a very hot dish, were they? Every time you saw them. <laughs> But why were there two, but they weren't related and they weren't friends? I don't know. I suppose it's like asthma and that, isn't it? Some kids have it. <laughs> and, and it just was a coincidence. Yeah, but asthma's quite a common thing. Webbed hands, Carl. Yeah. I don't know. You don't think of it, do you, when you're a kid? You just sort of... Oh, when, yeah, you, <laughs> when you first see them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There goes the frog, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Carl, look, let's have, um, <laughs> let's have a little quick session of White Van Man. <laughs> For those that don't listen to the show regularly... Uh, the Sun, as you may know, has a, a section called White Van Man where uh, a member of the public gets asked their opinions on the uh, week's big uh, political and social hot potatoes. Carl, we just thought uh, it would be fun if you answered some of the uh, questions. It's not so much questions, it's just your views, really, on these big these big news stories. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics. and for he what? He was a ski, he was a skier. Right. And he won gold medal, and uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. For what? I mean, if he did, why test drugs to ski? <laughs> why? Because all you do is balance. But imagine it'd be amazing if you were stoned, like going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you yeah, have to. It's not, not going to help you. No, it's, it's just like gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it? With skiing. Yeah, but it's often to do with your uh, <laughs> athleticism, isn't it? It's no, but it'd be like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. It's <laughs> not. It's not going to help them. <laughs> You, yeah, sit, you sit there and you go with the flow. Yeah. And you could try I, could and you hold I, could I say? Could I say the, the, the drugs Apparently he was taking? That's his defense, probably the, the, it pr- he wasn't. He probably wasn't jacking up H or you know dropping a few E's or getting stoned. He was probably taking more sort of uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs as opposed to him just like scoring some shit around the corner but, from someone, getting off his tits and jumping in a toboggan. <laughs> Doesn't mean that, yeah. does it? He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't <laughs> off his nut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have, you have, uh, you've tested you, you've pissed out your head. But why doesn't he just say, don't be stupid, why would I do that? It's not going to help me out. But it is, isn't it? Because uh, performance enhancing drugs know, do. Wh- wait a minute, Steve, wait a minute, Carl. Right, look at this way. Okay, look at me, yeah? I've got, have I got his attention? Yeah, the, 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 the light's gl- glinting off your ring there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. Okay, right, now, keep concentrating. Right, some athletes, you're aware they take drugs, that's to build up Swimmers muscle. Swimmers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, swimmers. 
runners. Example, runners, yeah. Not, not only do they help build muscle, right, but they, they can actually, you know, give them a boost performance wise, yeah. sort of like steroids and all, all this sort of stuff, right? So that's the sort of thing we're talking about, okay? Right. So again, he, was, he wasn't on a bomb before. You? What? Why would that help you when you all you've got to do is balance on skis? Not that's when you're at the Olympic level. Yeah. There's a it's lot to do with you know your body and no, your legs. No, it's practice, isn't it? It's like if you, if you've you skied for years, then you've got good balance after a bit. Oh, okay. do you know what, Carl? Do you know what? You've made a mockery of drug taking. Well done. Yeah. Right, next one, Steve. I Very missed it. I hate this. Um, I don't know if you saw it. What did you make of Posh Spice's Warts and All documentary? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bit of it. What did you make of it? Uh, I mean, people are slagging him off, aren't they? Saying you know she's daft and that, but daft, mate, you. She's. <laughs> I, I think they're all right, honestly. Yeah, you know, right. she's all right. D- I mean, I think David's really a decent bloke. Sure. Um, Do you agree that he's quite a simple man? Yeah, but he's a footballer. He doesn't need to be. Do you know what I mean? It's like me. Yeah. Like you know, all right. I only got an E in history. Sure. But <laughs> knowing about the Tudors doesn't help me press these buttons and put the next CD on. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So good luck to him, and he's done well out of it. And it's just yeah. jealousy. Yeah. I remember though um, when I was when I was back in Manchester, I was in Piccadilly train station, and he was there, right? Not as big a star as he is now, yeah. back then, but he was stood there, and I, I was so close to going over to him and saying, did you go to my school? Because I recognised his face, oh but I no. didn't know who he was. Do you know when <laughs> you sort of go, sure, I went to school, it's not the one with the big head, yeah. <laughs> but I do recognise him when my girlfriend got off the train, and I said, I'm sure I know him. She said, yeah, Lady Becky. And I was oh, so thank close God to for your over. girlfriend. She's, yeah. she's getting an awful lot of scrapes, does she? <laughs> she does, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what yeah. about the fact that uh, the pension crisis sure. is going to force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl? So you might have to carry on working into your 70s before I you can claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. Because <laughs> um, you see a lot of old people who look bored. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I honestly think <coughs> if, you you keep, if you keep your brain busy, yeah. you'll live longer. Yeah. It's only when you actually shut down right, that that's when your body sort of dies because it, it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got the flu, mm. keep going to work. <laughs> if you have a day off, you just feel worse. You'll mope about at home. doesn't do you any good. What about, wh- where do you draw the line there? Though? What if you, say, lose a finger? Pop into work? Um, depends if, if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? <laughs> you're not going to type as many words, but you, you'll do more <laughs> at work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this. This is the one yeah. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuff. And, you know, I mean. Okay. Um, and finally. Uh, that, you see, this is what annoys me about this sweet stuff. It's just, what's that? So what? Yeah, but it's the, pres- it's the Prime Minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuff. Alright. <laughs> okay. And uh, finally, what do you make of the fact that Top of the Pops have banned uh, Will Young singing both tracks uh, on the number one slot and uh, consequently wasn't on there at all? They had to show the video. It's the first time anyone's ever made this demand. He wants to sing both the A and uh, B side. Well, he can't. Double A, yeah. Double A, sorry. That's what he wanted to do. That isn't how it works, is it? Yeah, I agree, yeah. And the thing is, which one... I mean, at the end of the day, loads of people have bought it, haven't they? Isn't it like one of the best... So it doesn't really matter what it is, because people have got it. They can listen to what song they want at home. It doesn't matter about what Top of the Pops do. And... It's just annoyed me now. I don't, it's Who's annoyed you? It's, it's just what goes on in the world. I tell you, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I, I, it's better being in my little world. Uh, if that's what people are talking about on the street and asking the white van man, do you know what I mean? I think, think you're right, Carl. I think you're Jeez. right. Shall I, shall I play a lovely song for you? Because you're getting all stressed now, aren't you? I've not had a good day. No, I know. We tell you about it later. It's not a good day. Well, I'm going to play um, uh, a, a Neil Young track here at Harvest. It's uh, Alabama. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And this is for Carl. Athlete, West Side. I still like that one. It's a good track. Yeah, good I was track. worried that it was a bit of novelty and it would go off very quickly. But it's good. No, I really it's love not it. bad at all. On XFM 104.9, I'm Richard Bays with me, Steve Noakes and Carl Pilkington. Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and uh, there was a story I heard in the week. I think it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details. But what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans, were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier, a certain degree of trauma 
it's kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the interaction are. I don't <laughs> know why. No, if I mean, if came back and Tony Blair met him and goes, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what's the matter? Well, if you, there was people shooting at us and everything that was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. There was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, wait, this well, gun's not clean. Training, and I just it? cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, and the boots, uh, they were, they were oh, shiny. Well, he's got to do that, it's more difficult. His neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know, know what, what the ins and outs of it are, but. Um, uh, is it, what you've got to do is make sure you know what you're going into. That's what I do, you've got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, like, the Falklands or, you know, the Gulf, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? And you hit the back, yes? Will it be horrible? <laughs> it it will be horrible. Okay. Yes, it will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death. And I go right. I'm not going to go. And they go <laughs> okay then. Okay. That should be fine. Yeah, be fine. Yeah, just got to go. Is, is anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay then. Well, we won't send anyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. then. <laughs> exactly. My so brother, my brother went into the army, right? Because um, because he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son. You're going in the army. <laughs> And, um, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about eight? Eighty-one, right? And he joined back in like eighty-one or something. And uh, he, 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 I don't know, he was in Aldershot or something. Oh yeah. And uh, he wrote back to me mum saying, uh, you know, a bad time to join, bad time, and this. So she wrote. <laughs> what bad time to join? That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's like, dear dad. Yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway, go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sh- sergeant, and said, Can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What he, the Falcon and War? He's only just joined, and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, it's, I think it's a northern thing, like saying, How are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he's, he, the sergeant said to uh, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if we can not go, which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what do you mean? Uh, why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now, listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her? Because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really. Oh, please, because I promised her I'll say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertaining this phone call? Probably because he was new. What? Because he was new to the army. I suppose. Who? No, you're, I mean the sergeant. Uh, I don't know. Maybe so they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. <laughs> you can't do it. But you that's ludicrous. I, I love it. That, oh, we went over the top. Hilton, no, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this, is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, no, this seems to be in order. Because I notice it says... Um, uh, I do not want to go into the army. I don't want to go and fight. And it's crossed out and it's good. My mum says, don't yeah. you? Now, you didn't write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay, you definitely wrote this yourself. Your excuse. You're going to have to d- um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure if, if he was needed, he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort or something. I don't know. Well, it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh, no. I was but were the, the other army, soldiers think, going around yeah. just going, what? Wilkinson. <laughs> <laughs> no, he ended up being a mechanic in there and he got kicked out for um, going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> What? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't okay. believe that, Carl. You've oh, made Mr. that God. Up. That, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your your brother's a genius. I love this. I love this. Well, first of all, um, he gets a call from his mum, going, let him off. He goes, oh, God. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? Um, he's... Near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is... No, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of fags? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I did, was Did your mum phone out and say, let him off? <laughs> <laughs> so let him off this time. Can he... T- yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about 11 years. But ever since he came out, he's just kept getting into trouble and that. In the army, you know, people slag it off. But I think you're a certain type of person. It's, it's good for it you. It didn't straight in me. How did it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank. He was shagging someone. No, behind no, their he was, it's yeah. really weird. It's like back then, he was like a proper adult. And he had a house. And he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now, he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? I don't think he has. 
and the I, end I, of the I house. Seriously, I haven't seen him for about eleven or twelve years. Oh, so I haven't even spoken. It always start, uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. Can we take Carl to the uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vets and have him put down? Because it's just too stressful. <laughs> Main offender, XFM one hundred four point nine. Wow, it's that time in the show where I test Carl on his uh, homework. Yeah, for the week, history, the re-education of Carl Pilkington. As you know, we found out last week that he'd uh, taken one GCSE and he got an E, and it was history. Do you know, Steve? I haven't told you this. Went shopping on Sunday. Buy some new jeans. It's in a shop. Saw an old lad who I haven't seen for about two and a half years. Went, you alright, mate? How you doing? First thing he said, sorry to hear about your exam results. <laughs> God. I Had he listened to the show or someone yeah, had just told him? Yeah, he was on a train listening to it on the way to a football match or something. He knew that you were on the show, did he? Did he yeah. Listen? First thing he said, wow. sorry, sorry about your exam results. Haven't people have been coming up to you in the station going, do you, you, right? Right? you do you want to talk about it? Or? God. I know. Well, well, you did take it pretty badly. For a 29 year old man. Just a bit of a shock because it annoyed me that. I it wasn't a shock. You no. knew you, you hadn't got any. No, I thought I'd have got a bit more than that. I wasn't expecting, you know. But you weren't. You didn't even think you took history, so that must have been a bonus. Yeah, that's what my girlfriend said. Yeah. So well, but didn't yes she say something quite philosophical, which was like, you know, you didn't even have any this morning? Yeah, she said yesterday, you know, you, you didn't have anything <laughs> yeah. Yeah. today, exactly. which was good. Yeah. Mm. But anyway. Anyway, okay then. Well, you were tested on uh, Che Guevara, right, Carl? We should just hang on. We should just remind people what happened because this is a little series. I've got a lot of these little books, right? They're about like um, two and a half inches long by about you know two inches wide. There's tiny little things you see in the sort of on the front counter of Waterstones or Smiths, and it's a uh, the Life and Times, a series of all the great all the greats in history. Uh, last week you read about Rasputin. You wasn't impressed. No. Uh, this, this week this book's a little bit thicker than the Rasputin one. No, it's the same. I think was it? Maybe the writing's Bit to see the writing or something. Um, but okay, Shark Che Guevara. Who was Che Guevara? Just, just uh, now, you learned to pronounce it, right? And how do you remember? You told me in the week how you remembered to what his name was. Che is like shake, and his his surname is like guitar. Right, Shavar. Okay. Um, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right. Um, Tell us what you know, and I'll I'll relax. Right. First of all, um, his his name isn't really Che. Right. It was something else, and Shay means buddy okay. in uh, wherever he's from uh, Argentina. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? That's right, isn't it? Yep. yep. Right, so anyway, he was born, and he was. Uh, By the way, Carl's not reading this from a book now. This is all out of his own head. This is not pre planned notes. No, this is. this is. I mean, it's I know it helpful. sounds written, but he's just. Yeah. Right, here on we this. go, here we go. Go on. Um, he was born. Um, he, he had bad asthma as a kid. Right. Which I thought was quite interesting because they didn't have cars and that back then, and that's what they're blaming asthma on these days. The bad, the bad build-up of traffic and that. Well, they so did have cars, Carl. Not as many as they have now. Okay. Um, so that was that was something I picked up early yeah. in yeah. the story. He uh, had asthma. Yeah. His dad, his dad was into poli. He wasn't a politician or anything, but he was, you know, they were into the politics. Sure. So he sort of grew up around a family who was into, you know, watching the news and that, and yeah. what's going on yeah. in the world. So that sort of rubbed off on him. He went to school. He was doing stuff on medicine. Yeah. Yeah. He wanted to be a doctor, or he thought he did. Yeah. Um. Anyway, he he learned really quick. He did like uh, six months work in about three months, so he could have some time off school or something. Right. So he he took that time off. Yeah. And went to travel South America with his mate. Okay. On a motorbike. Yeah. Yeah. And he uh he saw all this bad going on in the world, and he thought, oh, this this is bad, lads. Yeah. You know. I, could do something here. I could yeah. change this, make it a nicer place to live. So he um, he said, "What I'm going to do is uh, join a gang right. that sort of uh, is against the uh, like the like the government." Yeah. Right. Right. I'm all right so far. Yeah. You're doing very well. Right. And and the woman who he met, who was like running this gang, was a woman called Ilda, who he later married. Right. And Ilda introduced him to Castro. Right. Who was like the the, like the head cheese of the gang right. who wanted to change things. Okay. And um, 
so uh, she said, like, this is, this is, uh, I think his real name was en- Engelbert or something like that. Ernesto. What? Ernesto. Ernesto. She said, this is Ernesto. He does medicine. We'd have him in our, in our sort of army. Yeah. So when there's injuries and that, he can, he can make people better. Yeah. So he said, yeah, all right then. So he joined the gang and they went like, uh, went, went to sort of, I'm chopping it down a bit. No, 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 no sure, 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 you're, 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 you know, you're condensing it's it. Not, it's not in real time. No. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so they go It feels like it. <laughs> you see, this is why I just wanted to ask you to ask me questions. Well, listen, let me cut, to the, let's cut to the chase then. So, okay. um, obviously well, he made his name as part of the, uh, Cuban Revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know what date that was? About, uh, no, I don't. Okay. And uh, obviously, so uh, he, he was a uh, big involvement in that. Yeah. Um, well, what, 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 in which country was he um, was he caught? He was caught in Bolivia. Yeah. Uh, how did he die? They executed him. Yeah. They shot him, and his last words before he died, right? The, gu- the guys there with the gun, yeah. and he w- he wasn't scared. He didn't. He wasn't like crying or anything. He said to the bloke with the gun, "He said, go on, shoot me. Uh, be a man." Yeah. Said, yeah, and they shot him. Yeah. And did d- did it tell you what happened to him after that? His dead body? No, but Suzanne was telling me about this the other night. She said there's more to it than that. They stuck it in a in a in a glass coffin, didn't yeah, they? So, well, yeah. well, no, but before that, they cut off his hands and his oh, feet, feet and sent them to. Uh, no, 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 and because they and they buried them in different places, and then they buried the body. I think they might have sent the hands to Ch- to uh, Fidel, but uh, they they buried him in an unmarked grave because they didn't want anyone to um, start using his his grave or his tomb as a place Martyrdom. of martyrdom. But of course, that just made him even more of a martyr because no one knew where he was buried. So it just meant that he was yeah, even more of a Yeah, but that wouldn't work anyway because if he did find out, that's more places people can go and sort of grieve. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If Genius. you've got all these different graves. What, with different parts of his body? Well, you've got a foot over there and it's like, well, you know, oh, God. His head know, over there. Thanks for what yeah. you're doing. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, so, so all in all, all so in all essentially, what's your summary of Che? <laughs> yeah, uh, you like him more than Rasputin, don't you? A lot better bloke than Rasputin. I can understand why he, he gets one of those little books. Um... Well worth knowing about, and um, good bloke, did a lot, you know. Crammed a lot into his short life. Yeah, but, um, yeah, interesting bloke. But um, just just on the subject of uh, Che Guevara, um, Steve called me up in the week because he was going through the, the duty log. He loved the complaints on the BBC duty log. And someone had written in because one of the Blue Feet presenters was wearing a Che Guevara T-shirt. And what did the bloke say? Yeah, this is a, a series of c- people can phone in and, and write and uh, complain to the BBC about different things. Why would you complain about wearing some? Well, this is no. On this it? was the thing: is you complain about the best. W- I mean, there's been some amazing complaints. Oh, there's there. some great ones. The, the best one, my favourite, my favourite one that wasn't a complaint but was actually just someone had to phone in was what an excellent edition of Kilroy this morning. <laughs> yeah, which but there's lots of that. There's things like Esther was superb. <laughs> yeah. Woman call yeah. one. Woman call. Uh, there yeah. was a brilliant one I remember once, which was. Um, uh, Robbie Williams was wearing a Nike T-shirt on top of the pops last night. Product placement on the BBC. It's just all so things that. Like yeah. But anyway, this was this was one phone call. There was a, a presenter on Blue Peter. She was wearing a T-shirt with Che Guevara's face on it. Right. And um, someone had written in and said, uh, or someone had phoned in and said, very worried to see uh, a presenter wearing uh, Che Guevara's face on a T-shirt. Are you trying to turn my children into communist revolutionaries? Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine who's thinking that. Who's bothering to phone up with that information, Carl? Yeah. Who knows what they're going to say about this show? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you've been championing the work of uh, Communist Revolution. Luckily, luckily, no one listening to this show can either write or operate a phone. (laughs) So I think we're pretty safe. So, so thumbs up, Che Guevara. Yeah. Well done to Carl there. Yeah, no, I uh, thought he was he's I brilliant. Right, but the thing yeah, is, that, you, that, you keep saying to us, you don't understand why history is interesting, and yet you're clearly interested by that. You, you remembered that Carl, information. Do you, I've got another. Yeah. S- I've got. I've got a few in the series. Uh, can I give you your next week's homework? Go on. There you go. Oh. Read it out. Hitler. <laughs> Hitler. The life and times of Hitler. 1889 to 1945. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know much about him? What 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 was the significance of that last date? Why did he what what was that last date, Carl? Why do you think he died in 1945? End of the war. Yeah. Which well, I'm interested in. So this. Yeah. This will have stuff about Anderson shelters and that. <laughs> it might it might not be covered in the Hitler um, biography, the Anderson shelter, but just I mean check if there's a special Anderson uh, <laughs> chapter, Anderson <laughs> shelter chapter. Yeah. Well, I look forward to this. Yeah. One. Seems yeah. Interesting. Uh, powdered egg is page four. <laughs> yeah. 
Excellent. Well, we're going to play a hip hop. Yeah, we're g- it's time for a hip hop hooray. Um, people are absolutely in love with this feature, Rick, as you well know, and I know you're somewhat jealous of it. Yeah. Uh, this week, I know that Outcast are currently on the playlist, aren't they, with their new single, Whole of the World? Is that yep. the whole world? Anyway, this is a track uh, from the big compilation, Outcast. Uh, it's just a sort of compilation of all their greatest hits. And uh, this is a good one. It's called Rosa Parks, Outcast. their greatest hits album uh, that's outcast and a track called rosa park like it like it yeah, enjoy yeah. It. now we just had a call uh from someone uh, impressed by carl and carl's very pleased because this guy has actually done a phd on Che guevara so in theory whatever subject he chose in theory he's probably one of the experts in the world on this particular field now hello are you there yeah i'm here hello what's your name my name's david david now, you, now where did you do your phd did at ucl at UCL, my old, my old college. And what was the actual title of the PhD? It was uh, Che Guevara's influence on class struggle in uh, Europe in the 60s. And what did you think of Carl's performance? I his, thought he did really, really well. The only thing, I'd never heard those last words before. So, so Carl <laughs> actually knows something you don't know. Yeah, possibly. Although <laughs> you presumably not take that as verified information. You'd probably, you probably wouldn't take everything Carl said uh, as gospel. You'd probably look it up yourself, would you? I probably would have a look, did, yeah. Did you know about baby's eyes? Sorry? Did you know that baby's eyes don't grow? I didn't know that. You see, that's why you shouldn't take yeah. things Carl says as, uh, as gospel. Because it, it'll come out with something, you know, m- you know vaguely uh, intelligent and then say, did you know about baby's eyes don't grow? Um, any, uh, any questions that you'd want to test Carl on? Any uh, thoughts, anything he missed there on the uh, history of Che Guevara? I think he did really well and... Uh I, I think I think he should be congratulated. What? No, because because yeah, Carl has problems with understanding why people are interested in history, and well, even though he's been reading these books, he keeps saying, "Why does anyone care about history? Why is it important?" What would you say to uh, Carl? I think he should maybe then look at w- who Che Guevara did influence and why he still influences people today. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, well, he knows that he influenced um, Citizen Smith, uh, and he knows that if McDonald's ever wanted to swap uh, Ronald McDonald for Che Guevara, it would cost him an awful lot of money. <laughs> so he is trying to p- apply it to the modern world. He's, he is having a go. Well, Maybe you should think like why Rage Against Machine have him on, on their T-shirts. Good point, mm-hmm. Carl. Why do you think of that? Why do you think they have him on the T-shirts, Carl? I don't know. Maybe that's that was a design of the T-shirt. Maybe they wanted another T-shirt. Maybe they wanted Ronald McDonald. But <laughs> didn't have any in. George. And they said, oh, we'll have that one there. Then. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Um, that just uh, before you go, do, do you think Carl would be an interesting subject for a PhD? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. um, well, if, if you know, if you know, well, hopefully one busy. day you'll become a professor and you can maybe set that as some uh, coursework. I could do, yeah. Carl Pilkington. Imagine that. Cheers, Dave. I might have an MA in Carl Pilkerton. Thanks very much, Dave. Okay, bye. Cheers, Thanks bye. That's good. My teachers never did that. What encouraged you in that never, way? Never said well done. So really? Yeah. But you never showed up. Yeah, they, they, no, they, you they have to be in the same room, They were really. too busy saying, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, but M- Mrs. Matthews, me, me head teacher. Oh, sure. let's not lay into Matthews again. Oh, not getting it. not Matty Matthews. Says, not not Grimble Matty Matthews. I'd never be a high flyer. D- d- if she could see you now. That, she, what did she say? She, you'll never be a high She's, flyer? She said that to me mum and dad. On really? On a parents' evening. <laughs> so what did and you that was after I'd played the drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> she clearly didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> R.E.M. with Orange Crush on XFM 104.9. Well, I'm nearly sure, only 20 minutes to go. I'm Richard Gervais, with me Steve and Carl. Carl, what did you point, what did you point to me then? Just saying, so reminded me. Go on. O- Orange Crush. Do you know we were talking the other night about contraceptives? Uh, n- no, you said to me, uh, I've got to do lots of homework. You look up how they used, in the olden days, how they used to use elephant dung as a contraceptive. <laughs> and I went, what? And he went, no, look at up. You make you give me those things. I said, I don't know. Was it they put, when you're running around with dung on the end of your knob, no woman really wants to go near it. Is that how it works? And he went, come on, you give me things to do. If you've just written a PhD on how to use elephant dung as a contraceptive, please get in touch. And I'll give out. the number in a minute. It's not elephant, it was crocodile. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? But, um, yeah, orange Sorry, crush. no, you can't. No, no, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Back. What do you mean? It was crocodile dung. What, how did they use crocodile dung as a contraceptive? I don't know. Right, go on, Orange Crush, yeah. So Orange Crush, um, what it was, I, th- I was trying to look up that, that thing about um, crocodile stuff, mm. using it. 
and um, came up with another one saying that they used to use a lemon sort of shaped right and the um put it put it on and the citric put the um citric acid citric acid in it kill the would sperm. kill the sperm right so they would sorry they would wear the lemon on the end of the knob is that erotic it works. Listen, I'll try anything, Carl, mate. That works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If the ladies like that. I mean, does it ha- could it be anything? Could it be like, a, you know, a melon? Kumquat? Yeah, maybe. In my in my case. What's those hairy ones? Yeah. Anyway, uh, it just reminded me when orange, orange crush. Well, thanks very much for that, Carl. It's, uh, and that, I didn't even ask him to no, 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 research no, no, that. No, no. So orange crush reminded you of the lemon contraceptive? Mm. Okay. Very good. You Very could good. use it as a little lemon squeezer, couldn't you? It could be like a novelty lemon squeezer. You just stand in the kitchen, <laughs> and then when someone wants to just come along and go, yeah. <laughs> on the end of your... Did yeah. you make this uh, lemonade yourself? Uh, yes, I, I did. did. It tastes funny. <laughs> it tastes funny. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Anyway. Do you, would you... Carl, this is a quick question to you. Would you ever sort of find yourself in a situation where you might confuse a woman's breasts with mountains? Is that a concern for you, do you think? No. Not, not a problem for you? Well, not if they're, not if they're small and humble, I would. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. That's what, fingers crossed. If they were small and humble, then I'd, I'd pretty much not confuse them with mountains. Thank God. But, I mean, if they were large and, and sort of pendulous. And with, like, like, quite rocky with snow on top. Exactly. Then I'd go, hold on, love. Wait a minute. Hold on, love. I was into this, but now exactly. it, it, I feel like I'm alone. Carl, do you know what we're talking about? Who's, who has who has done that? I'll Who's give you a clue. One more time. See, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. Shakira. It's a it's lyric that taking the nation by with. storm. It's quite a nice song. It's got uh, uh, It's very much like, it sounds a bit like uh, Men at Work, don't under. Yeah, it's got the pan pipes. Is this uh, What's It's Kid? Who? Um, Julio Ing- No, it's Shakira. Consequently, uh, the word Shakira <laughs> there being mentioned. I haven't heard of her. Okay. She's a big Latin star, apparently, big Latin American star. Yeah. And uh, anyway, just sing it again for us. See, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. <laughs> which is a concern. It was always a concern. Definitely. I see, I see a number of times she's woken up, and there's been a fat bloke with a beard and a little a little Sherpa. She goes, what are you doing? And they go, we're just trying oh. to climb this mountain. Look again. Oh, sorry, love. Oh, it's your tits. I didn't realise. Oh, your tits. We thought we were in I can't K2. believe it. I can't walk and we camping. You can't camp on my tits for the night. No. But why are you climbing them? Well, I Because they confused. were there. Well, they're small and humble. Are you mental? Look <laughs> at <laughs> Carl. I love that look at Carl. Carl is looking back and forth. You know when, they, when you sort of, uh, uh, you go t- t- to a cat and it looks back and forth between two people? That's very much like Carl's looking at us now. Or when, like, a child sees a midget or something in the street. <laughs> They're just transfixed, aren't they? And the parents oh, just don't stare. When we were pushing um, Ash, just the, our producers, uh, in a wheelchair, and we were pushing him to the VC. He's not a midget. We should make no, he's not a little midget. He's not tall. But um, we were pushing him to the VC, and this little kid just came up and just stood in front of him and looked at him. Yeah. <laughs> I just laughed. It was funny. <laughs> do you do that? I imagine that you get caught staring at him. <laughs> yeah, do you go up to people? Do you go up to people with problems and go, Mummy, is that a monster? Well, I was telling you one about when I used to go with my dad in the taxi. Oh, yeah. Well, Tell this story. Well, um, your dad, father was a taxi driver. He, dad, he had loads of jobs, mm. which he did back then. They don't do that anymore, do they, people? Don't, they don't have do loads of, jobs? of stuff. Sure. But um, it, one of, at one point, he had a black cab, and I used to uh, used to go with him. He used to get a, like a, a beer crate and put it in the front of the black cab yeah. and sort of sit just next to the meter. Yeah. And um, <laughs> anyway, we got this call, and uh, like the guy on the end of the radio said, oh, you've, you've, got, so you've got your son with you, haven't you? So he said, yeah. So it's just like, you know, we've got to pick up at uh, number 11 Village Lane or whatever. And he said, all oh, right. And it was this woman. It was like a woman version of the Elephant Man. Wow. The Elephant Woman? Yeah. It looked like... <laughs> it, it, looked, it, looked like it was really oh. strange because I was in the front of the cab. And um, when you're a kid, you, if you if something looks odd, you, you're a bit scared of it, aren't you? Yeah. And my dad was like, well, it'll be all right. <laughs> and we're, we're driving towards just the... G- it, oh, don't worry, son, I've got loads of buns. And just to I think I'll just <laughs> throw one down the street if it's just you run after it. You're being mean, right? How I old am a little bit, so yeah. How old were you, 18? No, I was, about, I was about 12 or sure. something like that. 11, 12. Mm. And as we got closer to her, it looked like sh- she she was holding like a bag of spuds on her shoulder. For a snack. <laughs> <laughs> right. And her head was all a bit mangled and messy and that. And uh, my dad says... My dad says Whatever you do, don't stare at her face. Yeah. 
And she got in the back. Did you turn into stone? <laughs> she got in the back, and I, I had like the mirror, the dri- driver's mirror thing, yeah. sort of having a, having a look, trying to work out. And I really, I mean, he said, don't stare at her face. I couldn't work out where her face was. <laughs> It was that. It was that weird. <laughs> oh God! So I'm not sure you're from Manchester. I think you're from like Narnia or something. <laughs> yeah, you or, got frog boys walking yeah, around the Lord of the Rings that, that got like the claws of a lobster and the and the head of a toad. Yeah, and you got women getting in with spuds for heads. I mean, what what this is sort not of what is this, this is not place? The place you grew up. This yeah. is mad. Oh, you can't believe it in London, can you? You come down and you go look symmetry. It must be amazing. It must be a, a thing to do with upbringing, though, isn't it? And because again, do you know I've said to you before, years ago when I was a kid and didn't have any worries, good-looking lad, mm. you go through it a bit, have a few more worries, and you look knackered. <laughs> now back there, there's a lot more worries and stuff, so you get a lot more freaks. Whereas in London, everyone's like happy, aren't they? Got I love the money. fact that stress can cause your <laughs> fingers to fuse. And your head's yeah. to grow. No, but if, if she like must have been really stressed to have a head like <laughs> yeah, that. yeah, she what was like <laughs> yeah, was she an accountant or something? Mm. <laughs> right. You know what I mean. But what? But what does she do? What does she say? Where was she, she going? In? By she the way, d- she couldn't speak. London <laughs> Zoo, please. <laughs> I think she, got, she was she was going to like a to the fair. Shop. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> honest to God, on my mum's life she was. Because at the end of the day, that's a good thing with animals; they don't judge you, do they? She's not she an was animal. animal. She's a human she's being. She's not actually an elephant. No, but she's You know the elephant man was not actually an elephant. <laughs> you understand that? He's got no elephant genes in him at all. No. That was just a cool name people gave him. Yeah. No, but it's the name of the disease, isn't it? Elephantitis. <laughs> Don't listen. So this woman, why was she going to a pet shop? <laughs> she was going to a pet shop? Come on, yeah, to find true. a husband. Is, it <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this true? No, it is true, yeah. Oh, I'm, God. I'm not, I'm not taking the mickey because it must be... So really bad for Of you. course it is. Carl, 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 I need to ask. I'm going on to you today about cutting yourself shaving. Yeah. I was going on about that. To think that she, I mean, she's probably not alive now, but to <laughs> think. But what you're saying, you're going to say this is a worse problem than a little cut shaving, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The I think you're right. Carl, really just, there's a couple of key questions I need to ask. One, if she couldn't talk, yeah. how did she tell your dr- father where to drive it? Did she have it written on her nose? Did she point home? with her nose? <laughs> yeah. Right, this has got silly. Pick your song. But and also, <laughs> finally, where did you say she lived again? It was like in a village, a little small village. Right. Um, just heading out of the way. All I'm saying is we could maybe get like some sort of coach, book some coaches, get a coach party out there to have a look at her. <laughs> and, some uh, photos. and now... <laughs> you can make some lemonade. The offspring of a woman and some spuds. Yeah. <laughs> Please <laughs> enter at your peril. Should it give me a shiny shilling? Oh, right. that's terrible. Well, I'm going to play um, a little bit of Teenage Fan Club song for uh, the lovers here. We left it very late. We've just been just, uh, you know, rapping with... Uh, Carl P here, and this is I Need Direction. Teenage Fan Club. Oh, they're a good band. They are they? a good band. XFM 104.9. Um, so, well, we're, we're nearly there. So, will your girlfriend be proud of you now? You perform a PhD graduate there. It's a bit annoying because she's not in London today. She's in Sunderland or something or Newcastle. Right. Working. So she won't know what the y- your greatest triumph. She, she saw last week you got an E in history and now this week you cu- you come through yeah. with some great plays that Mr. Mr. Matthews never you know laid upon Even you. Even looked she? at. No. no. just said you won't be a high flyer. Hey? You've shown them haven't you? You never know. I mean I had mates who um, <laughs> like you know my mate Colin Makin, who sure. did the disco with me. Pilkin's making music, yeah. Pilkin's making music. Yeah. He was dead brainy. I don't, I don't think he's up to much these days. Sure. It's you just can't plan it. Yeah. Just goes yeah. to show. Well, I mean, you can do yeah, a certain amount of planning you can do. I mean, driving a tank down to the shops with some fags, <laughs> yeah. never going to mean you're a high flyer. You and that, that, that woman uh, who you picked up in your black cab, she's in a circus now and she yeah, can happy. fly. Which is good. Oh, I'm confusing that with a film. You went to see a film this week, didn't you? Mm. What, what did you see? see? Um, the um, Monsters, Inc. Oh, did yeah. Did you have a little argument? What was the argument about? Did you have an argument with your girlfriend or something? Cause about well, the history thing took over last weekend, to be honest.
Hello. That is, uh, that's Muse. And time is running out. Is that the name of the song? Anyway, hi, it's Adam and Joe here. Uh, on XFM 104.9, we're still filling in for Ricky and Steve. They're going to be back at the beginning of November. Who cares when they're going to be back? Everybody cares. Everybody cares, especially Heat Magazine. We've been monitoring Heat Magazine's reviews of our shows. Are you listening, Heat Magazine? Is yeah. anyone from Heat Magazine? Oh, there it is. Hello, he Hello Heat Magazine. Yes. Hello, Heat Magazine. Uh, you have you got the latest gossip? Yeah, oh yes, we've got it. Oh yes, oh, we've got the latest gossip. What's everybody talking about this week, Heat Magazine? Hey, be careful. <laughs> Actually, be careful, Adam. Do a better voice for Heat Magazine. Yeah. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. I'm no, what's wrong with my voice? <laughs> it's not a very flattering voice for Heat That's Magazine. That's the way I speak. What? <laughs> <laughs> this week, everyone's talking about <laughs> J-Lo. What? What's wrong with my voice? That's not true, Heat Magazine. This week, you claim that everyone's talking about the return of Dirty Den. Oh yes, that too. Who have you been talking to about the return of Dirty Den? Mm. Have you just everyone on the bus, isn't it? Like a ram shambling old man. Well, someone mentioned it to us in a meeting. Oh, our agent mentioned it to us in a meeting. She said, if you were doing like the Adam and Joe show now, you could do the return of Dirty Den with the puppets. That's why we're not doing it.